So let's talk about part three of collect and the terminal operations in Java streams. And now we're going to talk about something called the teeing collector. And this was introduced in Java 12. And it's really interesting. It's kind of a little bit tricky to figure out a good use case for it, but it's interesting. So what is a teen collector? Well, as the name sort of implies, a teen collector returns a collector that's a composite of two downstream collectors. So you're going to end up taking one stream, and on the elements in that one stream, you're going to apply two collectors, and then you're going to merge the results into a single reduced result. So every element that's passed to the final collector is processed by both of the downstream collectors. And then the results are merged using the merge function that's presented here as one of the parameters to the team collector. So how would, might we do this? Or why on the heck would we want to do this? Well, that's a good question. So let's take a look at an example. So this example also occurs in the EX12 project in my Java 8 folder in my GitHub, my live lessons GitHub repository. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create a stream and merge it so that the characters in Hamlet that start with H's come first, followed by the characters that don't start with H. So up to this point, we've kind of been getting rid of the non-H characters. And now we're not going to get rid of them. We're just going to give preference to the H characters, Horatio and Hamlet, of course. I'm trying to think if there's anybody. Uh, Horatio and Hamlet, and if there's anybody else in Hamlet with a name that starts with H, I don't think so, but there could be. So maybe Geraldo. There might be a Geraldo, although maybe I'm thinking of Geraldo, the, the TV personality. Uh, merge the, so what we're going to do here is we're going to use a teen collector. You can see it's, this would be collectors.teen to merge the results from two collector operations on the stream. So let's take a look and see what we're going to do here. This is pretty funky. So what we're going to do is we're going to give it two downstream collectors. And those downstream collectors are filtering collectors, which is also baked into the collectors interface. It's a default method in the collectors interface. And you can see what it's going to do is it's going to take anything in the stream that satisfies the predicate method starts with H, H, capital letter H, lower letter, lower letter H. If that is true, that's going to go into this first list. And then we're going to take anything that does not start with HH, which in other words, if this predicate evaluates to false, and we're going to put that in another list. And then we're going to concatenate those lists. So let's take a look at this. So this collects the list of characters that don't start with H. And then we're going to merge the two lists together using the concat method. And uh, kind of funky, kind of weird, but it helps in situations like this when you want to be able to sort of make one pass through the stream and then do two things to the data in the stream and then join those two things together in some way, shape, or form. And there's also an example, which is a different example, which we'll look at here in a second, which recursively traverses a folder structure using the Java sequential streams framework. And we'll take a look at that in a second. This will also demonstrate the teeing collector. So let's go ahead and switch over to this example. So here we are in my IntelliJ project for case study EX42. And if you take a look at this thing, you can see that it has a little driver program here. And this driver program is simply going to initialize some command line arguments using an options singleton, one of the few good ways to use singleton pattern. And then it's going to make a new object that's an image counter object. And let's go take a look at the image counter object. So first, let me show you something else. This is the data we're going to be working on. This is a recursively structured file system where we have some files at the top level, which are either JPEG or PNG image files, and they're indicated and specified in this index.html file. If you take a look at that file, you can just see it basically just lists these various images. And then it traverses down into subfolders, which contain more images. And in this case, there's actually a nesting here 
So there's like three different levels of nesting and they have a bunch more figures and they're all kinds of silly pictures of various things. So that's, that's the data. It's a recursively structured file folder system. Here's image counter and this is going to show off using the teen collector and also a bunch of other cool things. So what we're going to do here is we're going to make ourselves a key set called M unique URIs. That should look very familiar because that's pretty much what you do in your programming assignments. And we're going to make this be a concurrent hash map. I think that's probably overkill here because this is a single threaded program, but we could easily generalize it, in which case it would be useful. And then the constructor of image counter gets the root URI, which as we just talked about, is going to point to this folder here in the resources project, resources portion of the project. And then we're going to count, call a method called count images, and we're going to say start at the root URI with a depth of one, get the total number of images, and then print the total number of images that are reachable from the root. So again, similar to what you're doing for your assignment, just doesn't have as much downloading, it just has counting. So here's what count images does. <clears throat> also a bit similar to your assignment, though not quite as streamsy. We check to see if the max depth has been exceeded, in which case we return a zero. We add the page URI to our map, and if it returns true, that means it was the first time in, otherwise it, we've seen it before, so we ignore it. And then if we make it this far, we call count images impl, which will synchronously, because we're using a sequential stream, count the number of images on the page, and then crawl all the hyperlinks accessible via this page and count their images. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. And here's what we do. This is kind of fun. So what we do is we take the page URI that we're given at this level of the recursion, and we call get start page on it. And get start page just goes and opens up either, it either opens up something that goes to my website or it opens up the local file system on my computer in that resources folder we just looked at. And we're going to get a one element stream that contains the page at this URI. And this is a blocking call, but it's single threaded, so we're not going to do anything with managed blockers and so on. We just wait because we have one thread. And then what we do, this is kind of funky, kind of weird, but cool. We then immediately call the collect method. And remember what we've got here is we've got this initial, that we have this initial entry, which is the start page. And we're going to use the team collector. And what we're going to do is we're going to count the number of images on this page. Remember we have a page, like, like this page here, for example. We have this page, so these are the images on the page. And this thing is going to count the number of images. In this case, of course, there would be, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I think, if I counted right. And then we're also simultaneously, although this is done sequentially, but if this was a parallel stream, it would in fact be simultaneously. Uh, we could go ahead and crawl the links on the page as well. So we're going to get the number of images on the page, and we're going to take that, and we're going to sum that together and return along. And then we're going to crawl the images on the page, and we're also going to get the result from that. And then we're going to take the two results that come back from counting the number of images and recursively crawling the number of links, and we're going to sum those things together. So that's what we get as the result of this. And if we look down here, this is how we get the page. We just make a call to download the page using the JSUP library. Here's the get count of images in the page. You can see we use the JSUP library to select everything in the page that has the image tag. Again, that would be these kinds of things here that are marked as image. And then crawl links in page is going to select all the hrefs on the page, which returns an elements collection, which is basically like a, a list. And then we're going to stream that, so we have a stream of elements, and then we're going to go ahead and recursively call this thing to traverse each of the links and apply the same technique that we just looked at to crawl and count the images. And when we're all done, we take the results because they come back as longs and we sum them up. So that's basically what the program does. You can see the team collector and how it works. And if we run this thing and we've propitiated the compile gods, we get the results. So you can see it when it goes beyond a level of depth of two in the recursion, it, it bails out. It says, not going to do that. It also notices when it's processed something already, so it doesn't double process it. 
and it tells us where it found the images. So there's a total of 21 images that are reachable from the index. And if you go back and you were to look carefully at what's in these folders and you count them, you would see they're indeed 21 images. So that was that little example. It's a, it's a fun example. It demonstrates for, um, one motivation for using Teen Collector. This is, of course, not the only way to do this. Uh, not even would be the best way to do it, but it demonstrates the use of the Teen Collector in a way that is at least defensible semantically.